Hey everybody, this is Robert again with the Tesla How To. So this is going to be an intro to the Tesla app for those using Solar and Powerwall. I kind of want to go through how I use the app that may be helpful for you, especially if you aren't using the app before, or haven't bought Solar, or are interested to see what can this do. This may be a helpful guide for you, advanced users. This may not be as helpful, but generally, what you're looking at is my home screen. I've got the app on an Android device. The app looks very similar iron to iOS, but there might be some differences. But the main thing is when you log in, this is what you'll see. So if you have power wall, if you have multiple power walls, it'll actually be like an X right in the middle uh, for times two, times three, times four. But I have a full charge. It's 12.35 p.m. in Scottsdale, Arizona. And the first thing that I like to see is the power flow. So for this first option, when you click on it, you're going to see your current home generation. I have the air conditioning running right now and that's using a good amount of energy. It's also, I've got some other stuff that's on that I'm not even sure about right now. So I've got five kilowatts from solar. I'm pulling one from the grid. Oh, it's because I'm running the dishwasher. So this is, this is the cool part that's fun. I actually run this a lot during the days. You can see how much energy things are being used. So I'm gonna walk around. And right now I'm not drawing anything from the power wall because my peak time starts at two o'clock and I don't want to draw from the battery and electricity is really cheap on off peak times. So the AC is on, but if I turn the AC off in real time, so I just turned it off, see how it drops all the way down to 2.5 and now I'm sending electricity back to the grid at a net metering one-to-one -one rate. I wish it was true net metering. Sometimes you'll see net metering as it's one-to-one, -one, like for every kilowatt you use and, uh, and that you generate, you'll get it credited one to one. The way it works with um, the way it works with net metering with SRP is that you get like value in money. So if I generate one kilowatt, I can't like use that kilowatt and bank it for the future as far as like a peak kilowatt rate. It it just gives me like four cents, which is what it costs right now per kilowatt. So this app's really, uh, this section is super fun just to look at what uses electricity throughout the house. So generally I'm running at maybe half a kilowatt hour um, with all my appliances. I've got a garage fridge, a house fridge, you know, range, um, uh, you know, your, your laptop charging, the TV running, it runs at about like half a kilowatt. Maybe with the TV, it's a little bit more. So then when I turn the AC on, I know generally it's about three, and a half to four kilowatt. And this uh, home is gonna go up and down. So you can see the washing machine may have a lot of high energy usage, um, whether it's a washing machine, dryer, uh, induction or electric range or microwave, um, but then it's not consistent. So when you're like doing the, using the dryer, you'll notice that the, the draw will start to fluctuate because it needs to heat up, but then it cools down, heats up, cools down. So it's not a consistent draw. The AC is probably the one thing that consistently draws all the time, uh, no matter what. So when you click on any one of these options, it brings you to your energy usage. And the way to use this is right now, this is the solar production. So I can use my finger and see like how much solar that I use at any given point during the day. So I can see how this kind of increases and sort of peaks right around now for the next about one and a half hours i'll see around five to 5.3 kilowatt hours uh here in august uh, 2020 but then if i click on this one this is my home usage so if we take off solar this is just the ac basically turning off and turning off uh, turning on and turning off throughout the day probably every 30 minutes it runs for 15 to 30 minutes and then turns off for 15 to 30 minutes and that's what you're seeing and there's pretty consistent throughout the day in the summertime. This is just what we're seeing. I have a really old 18 year old one stage AC. So if you have like a variable AC or a two stage AC, this would look very different, but that's what you're seeing for me. And then anything that goes beyond like, you know, four watt hours is typically right here is when I started the washing machine. So it jumped up to 6.4. But if I was charging my car, this would jump to like 14 or something like that. I've had it as high as like 20 kilowatt hour draw because I had the car charging, the washer and dryer running, the dishwasher running um, and the AC running at like the same time. But during off peak hours, I don't care because if I generate that back later, it's net metered at one to one. But also the electricity is just so incredibly cheap when you have solar with SRP for off peak specifically. They just gouge the crap out of you on peak. So if I start to turn more of these on, this one's now the power wall. So what you're seeing now is that from around uh, eight something AM, the power wall starts to charge. 
and that's where you see the negative. So anything that you see below the uh, middle line is where it starts either feeding back to the grid or feeding back to the power wall. And this last one is your grid pull. So if I take this all off, this is your actual usage from the grid. So this will always be less. This whole home usage is everything. So it doesn't matter if solar covered it or power wall provided it. This will just to tell you your total usage, which right now for me is 24 kilowatt uh, hours today, starting at midnight till uh, about 1240 p.m. But I actually only pulled 17 kilowatt hours from the grid specifically because some of that was covered by either the battery or solar um, throughout the day. But right now, as we scroll down, as I start to change this from all these items, this is kind of like, it looks like a mess, but as you scroll down, it kind of clarifies. So all day generated 25, produced 17. I only took not even one kilowatt from the power wall. I sent eight to it. I actually came into the day with some charge. 17 from the grid and I sent 1.3 to the grid and that's all day. And then you can actually sort by uh, peak and off peak. We haven't hit peak time yet. And so I only see off peak, but everything's been off peak. So I don't care that I've pulled more than I can produce. The main thing with SRP is generally you want to avoid using any electricity during the on peak times because they have a crazy demand charge. That's just unbelievable. If you, if you average one kilowatt hour beyond what you can produce, which is typically between like 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. when the sun's not shining and your battery is now left to potentially power your whole home. So if you used AC and are trying to cook on an electric range, you're, you're basically pulling from the grid at that point. And they'll charge you 20 bucks to average one kilowatt hour above what you can pull on average. And as you start to use more, it can be like, you could actually produce more than you've used in a month and SRP will still get you a 50, $60 charge because you used anything beyond what you could produce. Doesn't matter if you net meter it out, it's so crazy. But that's generally what I do all day is look at this and it's a lot of fun. This kind of lets you know when on cloudy days, what's being produced and it's updates in a matter of seconds. So it's a really helpful uh, power flow. So other than that, the other thing to look at is performance. So if I look at performance, it generally tells you you're self-powered um, and all day and off peak. And then it'll have a peak time when you have, uh, when we hit peak time. And what I'm looking at here is also on, um, there's different modes. So at the bottom here is another one that's backup history that just tells you when backup has happened. I don't really look at this, but customize basically says, hey, I can use this battery in different ways. Do I want it backup only? This will make sure that only when the grid is out or the power, the grid is off, that that's the only time that I want to discharge from the battery. And then you can choose how much you want to reserve for power outages so that the, make sure the battery is always at least a minimum amount. Self-powered means at all times, and they'll tell you, you know, help guides. Self-powered means I want to make sure that all of the solar that I have produced for the battery is used to power the home. Like I wanna discharge this thing all the time, no matter what, at any time of day, if I have power in the battery that's at least above 10% or whatever you wanna put it at, it's I want the, the when the sun goes down and I can't uh, overcome the usage with my production, I wanna draw from the battery. And then advanced is what I, I normally use and I have it on cost saving. So cost saving basically says I want to maximize my monthly cost savings so that I have the lowest possible energy bill each month. Balance will do a mix of things and, and reserve more for power outages and things like that that may be risky with cost savings because I only have one power wall and it's really hot right now. It's really easy for me to deplete the power wall down to zero just so that I can avoid the demand charge till eight o'clock. But now it's really risky. So if we lose grid power at nine o'clock, I've got, I can't actually, I don't have any backup power. So I should have bought two power walls. I only got one. And that's just an idea between balance and cost saving since it's not too clear from the app. The price schedule is something to be aware of as well. So during the week, the way you set this up is my peak times are between two and eight and it does fluctuate seasonality and you can't like program it throughout the year. You have to manually adjust it as things change if your utility provider has different times. But on the weekend, it's off peak so that the battery knows to discharge if it needs to to save money, but it also knows to charge back up on Sunday so that it can prepare for Monday, especially uh, since Monday has peak times, we have to make sure that the battery can be charged, which usually I can get to if 
the sun is out on Monday, I can charge the battery right back up because I have a medium system and only one power wall. But during the week, it's two to eight. But once we start to hit the fall and the winter time here in Arizona, with SRP, the price schedule, what uh, Tesla doesn't support is they don't support two different time of use plans, um, meaning during the day, and once we hit, uh, I believe it's October, November, it's not two to eight, the six hour window, it changes to an eight hour window, but it's from five to 9 a.m. and then off peak and then on peak again from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So you can't set like two of these graphs, unfortunately. So the way to do it is with my one power wall, it's basically, I'm gonna have to do something like this. Super annoying, even though during the day, I don't need it, I don't need the battery because it's off peak from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The good news is the sun will be out, so it won't be a big deal to really pull from the battery because by five o'clock, like the sun will have been out, it will have charged the battery anyways, and I can basically run off of solar power, and I won't really need to run the AC because the temperatures are very mild here during those times. So this is found to work well for me. I've heard of others building scripts to like automatically change this as they need to, but this has worked out uh, really well. But I'm gonna change this back to you know 2 to 8 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. and then there's some shoulder time too so the last item is stormwatch i don't know why you would want to turn this off necessarily but stormwatch basically can use predictive modeling to look into the future which I've seen is inconsistent. I don't sure which weather alerts it's looking at. So if you go to like weather.com and, or if there's a huge storm out, like I feel like this doesn't trigger, but if we know that there's a storm coming, we had one last month and we knew five days in advance and it was for hitting parts of Arizona and it actually never hit my home. But when Stormwatch is on and it predicts that we need to charge uh, the battery so that we know that there's a high likelihood of an outage and that you might be off grid, this will charge the battery from the grid. When you buy solar and power wall together, the, you're only allowed to charge the battery um, when uh, using solar. And you can't actually use the grid and low off-peak rates to charge it. And this is partially because when you're buying these together, you want the federal tax credit and you have to power this using the sun to get the tax credit. And I think for other reasons, but in an emergency for a storm, it supersedes that and it will actually charge up from the grid this doesn't trigger consistently but uh, it's safer to have it on and uh, that's what i would recommend so that's the app um, there's always the version at the bottom and uh, you want to set this gateway up um, on your on your tesla app if you don't know how to do that there's going to be steps to do it when you buy your system for the first time or you can go to tesla support center the only other features I would even recommend, you know, in settings, you can choose your notifications. You can switch to your, your Tesla car if you'd like to and manage all those controls. And there's also a loop box as well to manage referrals. And then you can send referrals out or even see how many miles you have left. These are mine, they expire next year and, uh, you know, basic stuff. So I hope that uh, walkthrough was helpful. Uh, feel free and like this video if you thought it was helpful. Subscribe. I'm going to have more videos in the future and helpful tips on Tesla just generally, but also for Arizona climate specifically. So hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching and talk to the next one. Bye.